So in today's video, we've got another 10 inch tablet to look at, this time by Dragon Touch. And this is the Max 10 model. I wanna thank the guys from Dragon Touch for sending this over to review on the channel. It's got three gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage. It's got a 1200 by 1920 resolution IPS display. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got. Looks like you can get a two year warranty with this one. User manual. This comes with a USB-C charging cable, so that's definitely good to see. Kind of on the short side though. And your charging brick. Now I gotta say, this definitely feels like it's got a little bit of weight to it. So there on the top is your charging port and where the micro SD card goes. There on the back is your rear facing camera and flash. Power and volume buttons there on the right hand side. And then right above that is your headphone jack. And then it looks like you've got two speakers along the bottom. I gotta say this tablet feels and sort of looks like a cheaper tablet, probably on par with a Fire HD 10 or the On Pro tablets by Walmart. But the screen actually doesn't look too bad on here. You can see they don't install a lot of blowware, so that's pretty good. When you first start it up, it's using about six gigabytes of the 32 gigabytes available. Unfortunately, this is only on Android 9 and security patch June 5th, 2019. So it's already a year behind on security updates. The weird thing is the bezels on the top and bottom seem a little bit larger than the sides. Software wise, this is pretty much stock Android. Swipe to the left on the home screen and you're gonna get your Google News Feed. Not really that many options in the notification shade. You've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Do Not Disturb, Flashlight, Auto Rotate, Airplane Mode, and Audio Profile. Let's see, let's see what the speakers sound like real quick. Now, just so you know, this is not a mini soundbar. This is like a full size. As you can see, this box is so large. Or USB connection, auxiliary, coax, optical, and where you plug in the power. On the back side, they do add sort of a wood finish, which I kind of like. Here, now I'm just gonna give you some samples of different types of music so you can get an idea of what this sounds like. Like I said earlier, this definitely sounds the best when it's on movie mode. I don't know, to me, these speakers definitely sound a little bit on the quiet side, but I think a lot of people are gonna be using headphones on something like this anyways. So when you've got a lot of stuff open, for some reason, it doesn't actually let you clear it. Oh, there it goes. It's a little finicky when trying to clear apps for some reason. Now when it comes to the cameras, there's an 8 megapixel rear camera and a 5 megapixel front facing camera. But I gotta tell you, yeah, they're really bad quality. And I know I say that on most tablets, but no, I would actually consider these bottom of the barrel. When it comes to video, it goes up to 720p for the rear camera and a 480p for the front facing camera. So just those specs alone should give you a pretty good idea of how this camera is. I don't know if that's a big deal for most people, considering most people have a good camera on their cell phone. Even cheaper cell phones are getting really good with cameras these days. So I ran a Geekbench test on this just to see how it would do. And I got a 150 for the single core score and 817 for the multi-core score, which you can see is about half the speed of a Galaxy A50. I will mention that the screen on this tablet is very cheap feeling, where anytime you touch it, it's gonna leave a fingerprint. So let's go ahead and test this out on some games and see how it does. It looks like it's got a built-in screen protector, but it's not a tempered glass one, so I would definitely get one of those if there's one available. Graphics on this are smooth with medium frame rates. Oh boy, I gotta say, this is definitely one of the slowest tablets I've used so far. Look at this when I'm just moving around in the game. Uh, yeah, we got a slight problem here, folks. 
Look how choppy this is. I haven't even started playing yet. Definitely a little better once all the graphics load, that's for sure. Okay, so I've got to say, gaming on this tablet leaves a lot to be desired. As you can see from PUBG Mobile, it definitely takes a while before the graphics load completely. I mean, after that, it is playable. But to me, the touchscreen on this, and not only PUBG Mobile, but Call of Duty Mobile, it just seems like it's too hard to aim on this. Like the touch controls just aren't sensitive enough. So I mainly tested this on three different games. PUBG Mobile, Call of Duty Mobile, and Asphalt 9. Asphalt 9 actually did fairly decent. Gameplay was fairly smooth without too much problems. You can tell this tablet is definitely entry level. And if you're looking for a gaming tablet, you may want to look elsewhere. It's not the worst tablet I've seen. But again, this is going to be like bare minimum on specs to run the games on this tablet. So overall, I think this is probably as cheap as I would go on a tablet. It seems to be fine if you're just browsing online. Although even with that, some pages seem to load a little bit slower on this. But I think for the price, you could find maybe something similar from Lenovo or Samsung that, that might be just a little bit better. If you're going to compare this to like a Fire HD 10 or even the 10 inch on pro tablet by Walmart, I don't know, I might lean towards the Walmart tablet. I feel like it might be just a little bit better than this one. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.